What's up guys? This is the Braveman and I am back to bring you to the next episode of my Empire Total War Let's Play as Mysore. And in this episode we have an incredibly, incredibly critical battle um, to take the city of Arkart and to get our trade income back because right now we're quite heavily in the red and I need to take the city so I'm kind of relying on my guns coming up to help you make a breach and attack the city and ultimately it shouldn't be, apart from that, it shouldn't be a very difficult battle. But it's incredibly, it's definitely critical, that's for darn sure. Um, and my empire is scattered, utterly scattered. Uh, I really could do with some breathing space at the moment. Uh, yeah, first of all, let's retake our cart. We're not going to go for a massive assault off the bat. We are going to form our front line. Send a block of melee troops. They're going to advance around the flank. Plus a few melee troops and Hindu musketeers to advance up on one flank for us. Oh, yeah, my general's not here either. Guns are coming in from a funny direction. To be honest, I think we might just have to attack. Do not really have a lot of flexibility. No, let's not be rash. Let's not be rash. Spread my line out, sure. Get my guns up, sure. You have a unit of enemy reinforcements nearby. Let's speed up time. My general... Get up to where the guns are. And my other... My camel unit. I mean, it looks like they want to... It looks like they want to sally, but I don't think they do. We just need to kind of take our medicine and get shot to bits. Just get my guns up, get a breach formed. Hey, are they gonna... Make sure one unit goes wide. Still getting, getting the opportunity to take out, because look, this re infantry reinforcement is nothing. I want to get those guns up. I want to build my breach. I want to create my breach. Three men charge into the rear. I don't like how my dervishes are routing, but if they do route, it's not the end of the world. My other troops are in pretty good nick. They might even come back. They've only lost 50 men. Keep it there. You go. They're shattered. Good. Stretch out. Speed up time because I want to get my guns up on this hill and do some good. There we go. The Dervish just came back. I spread out my line because they're getting shot at by artillery. Okay, there we go. Form my line and start taking out the enemy. You got you have a camel team outside the wall. Too bad I wasn't fast enough on the ball, but at least they're hitting what I want them to hit. Keep bombarding this section of the breach. OK, 
Careful of the camels. Push up some infantry to cover. Go on, General's bodyguard. Advance up threat. And drop into two squares. Does a real good damage to the wall. There we go, that's a bit of a breakwater to prevent them from hitting our guns. Even if they hit my guns and make the cavalry run away, that's fine. You guys don't fire at will. We got my general's bodyguard here providing some flanking fire into that two man of camel nomads. There they go. Okay, so you men get into position, into a better position. Too bad we don't do. Everyone done as much damage there as we'd like to do. Well, ultimately, it's not knocking out their infantry. Got to keep an eye on those camels because they they are definitely primed to come back. And there they are. Relocate. They're, yeah, they're coming back, but uh, my men are also in position. So a swift... Yeah, they broke off their attack. Swift volley. So if we pivot, will you charge? A couple of them are stuck in the gate. Yeah, there we are. We're making another breach. Form into all the squares. Blast some close range canister. You almost killed your own guys. My hope. Okay, there's the camel gunners. Yeah, they, they can still come back. It's all about the number of men they've lost compared to how many men are actually in the unit. Yeah, keep, make, keep making breaches and eventually they will... They will decide that they need to cover them and they'll pull men off the walls to make that happen. Come on, one more shot. One more shot and the the breach is made. Potentially kill some troops as they're running around. Oh, is it because I gave you an order while I was in fast forward mode? One team doesn't want to shoot. You guys don't want to shoot. So you don't want to give... You don't want to follow... No, that's not the noise. That. They won't even do that. Oh, there they are. Two of them will. Okay. So we've made a breach. Let's get in there. Or we'll get up there at least. Actually, will you guys fire into the back of this wall? Be 
can't, that's okay. But at least fire into this section of the wall. Okay, right, you guys also advance. You men scale the gates. Let's get a unit of camel nomads up close. In the event the AI in the event that the AI do something silly. Let's turn my guns off actually. So here come the Indian mercenaries, get my guns to pound that unit there. I want you guys to get up there, not through a breach, but just sit on the wall. Get up there, mount the, mount the fire step, and then shoot. It's annoying that they, how they... Sp Why have you routed? Was it the gunfire? Because you only lost three men. Yep, they're aware. What's happening? Yeah, see, I knew you'd come back. Dervish is on the wall. Native War Auxiliary are upset because they're being shot at by the wall, which again is, is very fair. So we're going to charge through the gate, attack the dervishes, also attack down the wall into the armed populace. They're not coming out to try and attack us, they're just going to stand there and stop us from getting in. These guys to secure the gate, and my Hindu warriors just to break through. You guys actually hold ground. Let the Hindu warriors. If you guys aren't going to climb up and just going to run through the gate, then just don't bother attacking. I'll feed you in there one unit at a time. Because of the routing issues, my camels want to go around in the breach rather than through the gate, which is a bit frustrating, isn't it? The Hindu warriors are cutting Hindu musketeers up. Still haven't pushed out through here. Pouring volley. Or not. Is it volley? Yeah, they're volley firing. Well, they're trying to. push my camels through the gate, because it's my gatehouse. Okay, you guys... There's a trick to these Indian gatehouses. Sometimes you can make them have a real nice... Deployment shape. 
But yeah, again, they, they also want to try and run through the gate. Which I don't, but we're hacking our way through there. Charge the horsemen with my camels. Get my elephant in there because it'll make people upset. Get my camels over here as well. Ultimately, just get all these melee warriors in here and they will run through these Hindu warriors because there's not enough of them now to slow down the slow down the push. There we go, they've killed their general. There you go, my guys should start to make their way through. I might kill a few guys on the way. Send someone in against the armed populace. Send in one unit to attack the armed populace here. I'm sure where my native troops have gone. Oh, there they are. But here we are. They're primed to just run through the troops blocking the gate because now they just don't have enough mass to stop my men from simply running past them. Only one man left. I want to get my guys inside before we lose control of the gatehouse, which is very possible from these guys not holding up their end of the bargain. So some of these units at the back, just make them run through the combats. We don't need them to do much heavy lifting. We need to keep make sure that the Okay, let's get my camels redeployed. Ah, my general fell! No! Oh well, needs must. In which case then, hit this hit this unit over here. There you go the Firelock Arm Populous. But you can soon see how if you don't watch out, units just get stuck. Fundamentally, like these units. If you let them get bunged up, they will bung up when you really don't want them to. So you need to keep right-clicking to make sure they do what you want them to do. So you guys get onto the centre and just hold. Hindu warriors are in. Dervishes are in. Broken, shattered, you men. Okay, right, I think that's their army. Destroyed. Again, lost more men than we'd like. Lost my general. Not my really good general, but a general nonetheless. Probably didn't really need, didn't really need to send him in, but I think it was worth doing. There we go. The entire garrison's destroyed. But what do I want to try? Will they well, first of all, got a bit of income, but will we be able to do this? Nope. Not gonna let us peace out. Hey, my general's okay. So let's spread out my Jebek out to Barkalor. 
We need to repair the military governor's encampment, but we're not going to get any money. We're not going to have enough money for that unless we sell some techs. Ring bayonet for a cool grand. Not worth it, apparently. Ottomans. Offer a spinning jenny for a cool grand. I really don't like... No one really wants to do business with us, not at all. Come on, Louisiana. Trade. I can't offer you I can't offer you anything. Trade and offer ring bayonet for two Italian states. Nope. be really good if I could get... What if I do peace and trade? Nope. Fair enough. They're on their way. I might actually shift one unit of Kizilbashi into Satara to make it... I was hoping to make it minus one. But you guys need to commit. Get into the fight. Can I not re can I really not get rid of any tech? I mean I tried Britain, didn't I? With well, the Ottomans. Okay, I got cool grand. Thirteen hundred is what we need. What if I try to get it for five hundred? Oh my god. It's actually kind of tempting. But no. It's very spicy. Give by God, don't want to give away Ceylon to do it. What if I peace out with the United Provinces? They want me to give them Ceylon for peace. No. I'll give you... Yes! To get trade. We gave away 250 of our cold hard cash to get us 2800 next turn. But if I can repair Karnataka this turn, fine, I'll sell stuff to the Barbary states. A grand gets us. A grand gets us into the right ballpark. A Cherokee. Nope. Denmark? Nope. Georgia? Nope. God, they got some good techs. Hanover. Demand a grand for two techs. Come on now. We're offering 920. That's enough. That's enough. Cost one three. Cost one three twenty. Good. Right. Okay, next turn I can repair that. Okay, right. Let's take some Hindu Musketeers and combine them. Get my Kizzle Bashi and combine them. My Dervishes are okay. Those Hindu Musketeers combine them. Just because Hindu Musketeers are expensive. 2,800, that should jump once we've got Karnataka repaired. Because then we can we can um, collect the tax on it. So that'd be, an extra, that'd be about five grand-ish. But I mean, I really need peace with a load of European powers, but I'm not going to get it because I'm not powerful enough either militarily or economically, and that one Mughal unit that's still free is likely to go around and raid all my stuff. If I can bring Satara into the fold, that'd be good. Say technologies is dangerous, because all you're doing is just making other... Ooh. So it's Denmark. Denmark's not gone, but Sweden's taken Copenhagen, as they are known to do. Yeah, they raid our schools. 
an industrial area and a mine. I'm going to auto that. Didn't use that many men, actually. Back across the bridge you go. And if anything, that's going to reduce our... our, um... repair... our, uh, tax bill. But our uh, sustainment bill for our armies. Barbary State's going to continue their tradition of just of just sailing into the jaws of death. 251. Again, because they broke all our stuff. You guys can't get there. It's one stupid unit of camels. At least they're dead. So now you guys can... can you guys get into Hyderabad. Consolidate your position. You guys... Potentially advance towards Hyderabad yourselves. Ah. Can't to, still can't tax you. One and a half thousand. Is it stuff's getting trades getting raided? No, we're not getting any. Hmm. Apparently, we are still getting it, but I think it just means that's getting raided. That's unfortunate because it's a wealthy weaver's cottage. Come on, Mughal Empire, chill out. <gasps> I wish you joy of the day, he said. Do you want to trade? This is very good. Trading with Sweden as well. 3,000. This can work. Got a decent southern holding. I can stabilise it, make some key investments before continuing my war against the Mughal Empire. Although, has that screwed me over in terms of their allies? Ally with Persia... Russia, Prussia. Well, if they declare on me, or the run with Portugal as well. Well, we might have made a bit of a rod for our own back, but at least we can try and rebuild our shattered economy and armed forces. Because ultimately we've got... We've got nothing. And if possible, I'd like to try and sail over to... Send a small force over to the Caribbean, capture a few islands, because they might be valuable when it comes to trading away regions for peace. They're bargaining chips. The future endeavours. Yeesh. With three grand we can repair a few key buildings. Get some key research done. And then fund a bit of a war machine to advance into northern India. Two universities would be ideal about now. I'll take what I can get. So repair you, repair you, repair you. See, Division of Labour gets us the next level ports, which are very valuable as well. So you guys are under repair. Combine some of our weakest units. You guys might even stay there because we know how the AI likes to push around the flanks. Let's repair you. Let's repair... It's a lot of money to repair you. Let's repair this in Goa first, if we can. We can. Repairs across the board. Four and a half thousand next turn. We can tax you. But I don't want to just yet. Division of Labour next turn, which will be quite big. We're getting lots of trade. Peace out for Britain. There. 
So I may dial down both of my policies just to then boost tech growth, boost income growth and town growth. There are no major Mughal forces near my coast, so we might actually be in a position to sail an army up to hit Calcutta. Don't infiltrate it, just stay nearby. Take Calcutta. If we if we push on Calcutta and take Calcutta at the same time, that will be useful. It's unfortunate that the United Provinces won't leave us alone. But I would hope that they're at war with other people, like Spain and Sweden and the pirates, so they may Sweden may end up taking them out of the equation for us. Down the line I want to turn this Oh, I can't know. That's a madrasa now. That's useful. Get rid of that religious unrest. They're going to start to turn in our favour. We can tax you now. That's an extra 1,600 a turn. It's so up to 5,100. That's really good. But I think I want to keep an army in the south to protect my investment in my economy, because we know how the AI just likes to land troops off our coast, and we're kind of screwed because we can't afford a decent standing navy. Russia's pushing into Russia. It won't be long till eventually they start sending ships out to attack us. But I want to take this brief lull in the fighting to get my next level physiocracy technologies research to get that upward pressure on my tax base done so that when we begin our next campaign they want oh, that's no no I, i've got my things mixed up no i don't want to give them Karnataka because that's an incredibly valuable region it's a it's the linchpin of my of my um, economy, really. But hopefully, if Portugal gets knocked out by Spain, which is perfect, we'll go for a Madnagar. Yeah, right now I want to boost my economy. Division of labour, good. Okay. It's a poor trading port, prosperous trading port. So for two and a half thousand, a lot of extra growth. We get a big jump of big jump of income if we get upgrade the commercial port at Goa. No point upgrading this. Spice plantation. That's a big upgrade. Almost doubles our spice production though. Thirty turns of Pondicherry, which we could grow if we upgrade our farmland. Let's repair the tea plantation because that'll be a, provide a temporary boost before it gets raided again. Let's repair the farm. So tar is quite valuable to get because lots of these things can be would be quite valuable. Do some tactical upgrades. Well, not upgrades, a bit of replenishment, not a huge amount. Well, then let's get, let's upgrade. And lots of these areas don't even have good roads. But I want to upgrade this trade port here as a good step one. Plus upgrade this farmland adds a bit of upward growth on pressure, upward growth on pop on um, town development. There's one town here, Golconda, and there's also Kernul, which is here. Okay, that could be quite powerful to, to put a second school in. That could be quite useful. 7,100 next turn. Good. Yes, yeah, so you're a problem, because you're all allied together. So ideally I want Spain to knock out Portugal first. 
We need to, I, want, I want you guys to get rid of your religious unrest. You don't need to be completely um, Islamic, but just get rid of the religious unrest because you've got plenty to fight elsewhere. Ultimately, I ought to be any surplus cash really needs to go into rebuilding my army because when oh, I didn't check my technology it's, I'm sure it'd be another physiocracy technology that it will jump to but I haven't been I don't want to spend it all on my economy and prevent repairing my army that's quite important Yeah, physiocracy technologies increase tax base growth, out develop the Mughal Empire, and continue expanding. Potentially, declaring on Portugal might be the smart thing to do. Depending on their ally structure, the Mughals have lots of allies. But if I declare war on Portugal, who are allied with the Mughals, that might be a easy way to get back into the war against the Mughal Empire without necessarily saying I'm going to be at war with Persia and Russia and Prussia and especially when it looks like the Baltic where well, the Scandinavian regions um, is in trouble Russia's raiding the Danes are rebelling they didn't win but they're still rebelling Yep, every turn the Mughal Empire does that, it makes that decision. Do I attack them? And then they decide yes or no. Should get around 7,000 this turn. Or not. Probably someone... Oh, Sweden got raided. This port got raided, didn't it? Yes, it did. Subedar's palace could be useful to increase our tax rate in the region. Do we have any export bottlenecks? I don't think so. Ooh, Goa can now be taxed. Satara's not got any bottlenecks. Obviously, they, they, we, that adds cotton to our export... Uh, Export drive. High yield tea plantation might be a good investment. Meager yield. Average yield cotton plantation. Poor port. Very poor port. Okay, let's upgrade. This port plus spend extra on replenishing whatever we can replenish with the cash that we have. good. Yeah, so it went on to utilitarianism. Again, it increases unhappiness, but it reduces the cost of building cultural buildings. And again, it gives us extra town wealth growth per turn. Which is already quite good. Yeah, Mysore. Yeah, Mysore's unhappy. Actually, the camera for reform is going to go up a little bit. I need to, up I need to build... The Raja's Palace, I think, next turn to increase repression. And get rid, I need to get rid of the religious unrest. Yeah, take this time to plug holes in my ship, so to speak. The Prussians were advancing into Russia, but it looks like they've, had a, they've lost a territory to Poland, or I think Warsaw has rebelled and came back to Polish control. The Ottomans are just kind of turtling. Yeah, I really want to take advantage of this time where I don't have to spend money on building armies, or at least. Not as much on building armies. I want actually what I want to do is start to replace Hindu warriors with Islamic swordsmen because Islamic swordsmen are just better and they're cheaper. Yeah, 
Sweden's consolidating its hold on Copenhagen, which is good. I'm probably going to want less cavalry protecting Karnataka than regular troops. Okay, 6,300, that's a good amount. Probably going to want to build Subodar's Palace. Can't yet get the Raja's Academy because I don't have secular humanism. That's going to suck up almost all of our cash for a turn. But like I said, let's start to trundle. It, it is Hindu warriors. They're particularly useful at replacing, isn't it? Oh no, is it, or is it dervishes? No, it is Hindu warriors. We got a one less melee attack. Plus two, plus one charge bonus. Plus four defense. Plus one morale. Yeah, that's a no-brainer there. Let's build three Islamic swordsmen. There's no Hindu warriors here to disband. There's... None here. There's one here. There's one, two here. Again, tactical replenishment on some key units. Combine you guys together. Right, okay. One more, uh, two more turns till utilitarianism. I need an ordnance factory because that gets me 12 pounders. Oh no, we've already got ordnance factories, but I want uh, howitzers, really. I need Hyderabad. I'd like Hyderabad to develop Kurnool, but that tax income isn't. Well, 21 turns. Might be worth doing that just to speed up the development of the border town. It doesn't impact my income massively compared to other regions. Okay, we start to get some ports. They're going to be built next turn. Okay. Iron hand. Yeah, that is you. Yeah, good. In terms of our agents though, ooh! Plus one management. Okay, so the lower class's happiness is balanced out. He makes my upper classes a bit unhappy. But that balances out there. So let's replace him as my head of government. To gain... Oh, we must have lost a head of government, actually. I'm sure we did have someone who generally made my uh, people happy. Really do is spawning a new agent here, really. So ultimately, we need to continue our war against the Mughals. I want to try and push up towards Cuttack and take Calcutta both together, but then I need more, I will need more um, Imams to keep the peace at home. And abroad, really. But again, I can't really push until the force at Satara is... Well, until Satara is more in the fold. Because right now, actually what we've got is a... Quite a valuable territory on the border. But even with a reasonable garrison, I'm still public order zero for the lower classes. So I can't, I can't advance out of it. So that's kind of my bottleneck. I need my madrasa to keep converting the population to Islam, and I want they want to give Hyderabad. And they want they want they're asking for Hyderabad, and they want to give me Kashmir, which they're not going to get. It's advan it's advantageous they're moving back, but at the same time they may they're asking for things, and I'm not giving it to them. So they may say, okay. We want Hyderabad, so we're going to have to take it. But if they declare war, there's two places I want I want to advance to on the campaign map. And I'll show you where that is. Go. 
go. It's got the next upgraded port, which is good. So Hyderabad, they can cross this bridge, and they can't cross... They can cross this bridge, but they can't attack Hyderabad from the east because of this river. So when war does happen, this army needs to push up and secure this bridge. So that's two choke points secured against the Mughals. We've got 5,800... But I want to try and find the most, the cheapest ways to upgrade. I got my economy. The quickest wins, if you like. Well, partly, I think part of it is going to be this trade port upgrade, because it increases plus three percent town wealth and also adds just loads of extra goodies. So, to be honest, upgrading the port will be a good idea, as well as my average yield tea plantation. Let's see if we can get any more trade partners. Only the Barbary States, which I'm not really interested in. You've got two ports that can develop. So I might actually upgrade this farm. With extra cash, plus again, a little bit of extra topping up. So we've got some Islamic swordsmen here. So you don't really need any. You can have one. You can come down here and get rid of one of your Hindu warriors. You can go over there and join Mr. Kodali. One more turn to utilitarianism, and again, that's going to make people unhappy. Potentially devastatingly so in Mysore, so we might want to move Camel across. Not this going to do much difference make much difference you got one more town somewhere it's not here it's Mangalore there it is Bellari Bellary yeah might be hmm. no, one more turn to utilitarianism let that happen 5500 next turn because Sweden got raided Okay. They're probably going to then re-attack me. They're building up an army to do something, and it's probably going to be to attack me. The swines. I'd like an imam to spawn at Satara. Because then I'd be feel more confident going offensive. I think when it comes to Portugal, they might be allied with Britain, but we're already at war with Britain, so it doesn't make much of a difference. I could try and buy their territory in India, but they're not—they're un very unlikely to sell it to me. Go on, Sweden, repair the port during this end turn phase, so we can trade and get more money. Still asking for stuff, but they're not going to get it. Okay, now they're asking for things. I'm going to build some more troops. Because taking Katak in Calcutta would be incredibly valuable. The frontier territories for us aren't super useful. I mean, they're useful because I'll still provide a tiny bit of tax income, but they're just grumpy territories. Okay, so you've gone to totalitarianism. Government by consent. Again, increases research rate, but I might actually go for spinning mule, because I've got a reasonable amount of uh, weaver's cottages. One, two, three, four weaver's cottage. So that's an extra 8% wealth. And it also means we could build upgraded cotton mills. Or well, grenades would be could be useful for the immediate command benefits. Hmm. No, just go for government by consent for now.
you chaps, replenish. Let's focus on building up this army. So let's get not not guns. I want twelve pounders. They're cheaper. Two twelve pounders. Two camels, probably. We'll get Kizilbashi light cavalry, and then camel nomads, and then that'll be you done. Thirteen hundred. Can upgrade the cannon foundry to an ordnance factory, which isn't really what I want to do. Uh, let's. Hmm. I might keep hold of it next turn and try and use it to build some upgraded roads places. Because a couple of our towns are on dirt roads. Well, this is quite a good upgrade, actually. It's quite cheap. 800 for an extra, extra happiness and increased town wealth growth. 19 turns till Kurnul is done. Could really do with a second school, and that's what I want this to be about. If I can get Kurnul up to a second school, then we'll be firing on all cylinders. Let's maybe get you guys back to Katak to see what's more on the front. There's one army to deal with. Cuttack's open. Calcutta's open. So if we drive a force up the coast and support it, we can do a lot of good work on the offensive. In terms of Portugal, they're allied with the Mughals and Britain. I'm at war with both of them anyway. So if we declare and push, I mean, I want to boost my army here at Ahmadnagar, really. Because they will get a garrison to take the city. Plus, I'll have to deal with whatever immediately comes off from the enemy. The question is, do I send a cheeky racebook galleon to sit here and raid? So what happens if we don't raid? 5,600 raiding gets me 5,600, exactly the same amount. Okay, don't raid then. Otherwise, they're just going to go destroy my ship and then destroy this sloop that's currently garrisoning this port. Okay. It might be useful as well to keep building up a bit of a war chest, which I'm not doing. Because the war's going to come. And to be honest, I'd, I'd rather I start it by declaring war against Portugal than the Mughals start it and potentially bring in Russia, Prussia, and all these other regions I just don't want to be at war with. Keep your trade lanes open, people. I mean, they know what's coming. They know what's coming. Barbary states go on. Are they going to die? Well, yeah, they got repulsed by a ghost fleet. Pirates keeping people bottled up in the Americas, which is good. Farms built here. Okay. okay, let's upgrade. Punish the unit of camels. Could upgrade the school, it's a good idea, but 
we've still got clamor for reform issues until the Raja's palace is built. So let's not do that. Let's upgrade you to a Thacker's mansion. And these guys are all militia, so that's not overly a problem. I, mean, I said I was going to build a war chest, and then I've immediately just spent it all. Upgrade the rice farms to further speed up Kurnul developing. There's no mer oh, there's no, there's no merging I can do to ease things along. Ooh, Savoy. Pfft. Give us Hyderabad and Karnataka and we'll become your protectorate. No. What if you trade and I will offer you 13 gold pieces? Mm. No. Never, ever, 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 ever trust protectorates. Ever. Because they can completely, 100%, turn around and declare war on you. It is not binding. They act like it's binding. They do the whole, oh, you're, you're our protectorate. But then they don't actually... They're under no obligation to not just immediately come and screw you over. But I think we're not far off of declaring war on Portugal, seeing if the Mughals join them, which they probably will. Actually, I forgot to see what the happiness of, of Satara will be like once they lose their garrison. That's that's the defining characteristic here. But let's, let's let things continue. It's so unfortunate that Russia keeps raiding and preventing my trade with Sweden, but there we are. I wish France would just man up and destroy the United Provinces, because that would get rid of that massive fleet off my coast, which is just definitely not worth building a fleet to stop. That's the problem. I can't stop it unless I build like a stack of fifth rates, which is of no use to me in the wider scheme. As soon as my, as soon as Satara gets, gets chills out enough that I can leave it at best ungarrisoned, then we might be ready to attack. Could also do with better roads. That's also a thing. At least cobbled roads to make it easier to spring up reinforcements. So Satara is currently plus eight. A garrison is currently adding twelve repression to that. Okay, they can handle it. Interesting. Good to know. Let's build a set of guns and let's upgrade some roads to make it a bit better for my guys to move around. You guys are now up to full strength. It should be quite a devastating little army to deal with for the enemy. You guys are at good strength. You could probably stand to attack. Well, if we attack Calcutta and push up the coast here, that really causes them some issues about what to do with armies like this. We haven't graded anything in Ceylon. There's a lot of stuff we could do, but ultimately they don't like us very much. Religious Unrest 8, because it's an entire town of Protestants, because I can't get rid of this guy without sending an agent over to kill him, and it's not worth sending an agent over to kill him. Let's actually go... Let's see there's, make sure there's no other large single stacks. Full stacks. 
ahead of us. Fine, I was going to give you 13 gold pieces, now you can have 84 gold pieces. Nope. Shame, no more major powers I can trade with. But to be honest, France. It doesn't serve us any purpose to being at war. Just huck a random peace deal across. Nope. Okay. So we've got one more turn till we get government by consent. What are we doing income-wise? 4,900. Again, that's probably because we've just boosted our military. Oh, no. If they take Ceylon... Not the end of the world, because Ceylon's not actually doing much for us, is it? And it, especially if it gives us peace. If I can then say France, just we just peace out? You've got Ceylon. Relax. Or the French take Ceylon, the Dutch fleet buggers off, then I reinvade with my force at Karnataka, take it back, and now I've got Karnataka, now I've got um, Ceylon unblockaded. The possibilities are endless. I think, to be honest, I have to just begin... Well, I'll wait one more turn after this to see what that happens to that French army. I don't, I don't have the navy to kill it. If it lands in Karnataka, obviously I'll fight and destroy it first. But if it lands in Ceylon, I begin the war. That would be my preference. Because then I can push. We'll begin pushing against the Mughal Empire, take new territories, expand my tax base, and continue my advance up the continent. I would probably like to build some sloops as well to raid ports on the west coast. If possible, that is. That'll knock them off balance somewhat. It'll force them to redeploy troops to stop us. They may then hoover up all said sloops, but that's if they do, they do. But I think the confusion and disarray it would put them under would be overall to our advantage. I'm acutely aware of the fact that I'm... There is a danger I'm being outpaced by the other major powers. I definitely am in terms of technology, because some of the other regions are quite well developed technologically but also economically as well because there's only so much I can do with southern India southern India is a very valuable region but the rest of the world is expanding and developing where these countries like Persia Persia Prussia are they've done quite well expanding towards the east but we've got a turn but we don't have to worry about the that French fleet just yet I'm fairly sure, actually, with the, with the Mughal economy, actually, it's shrinking. Or it was, anyway. But yeah, if I could take Calcutta, repair it, and then advance out of it quite smartly, that would be use very, very useful. But it depends. If the French take, if the French take Ceylon and we agree peace, the government by consent has immediately stopped them from doing wedge formation. Let's go for Spinning Mule to gain us a boost of the wealth from textile factories. I mean, what, I mean, what is your navy? Galleon, 5th rate and a 6th rate. I mean, ultimately, theoretically I could stop them, but if they go after Ceylon, we might get peace. We might even get trade. I mean, I doubt they'll, get, they'll agree for peace now. Yeah, understandable. Let's keep our fleet, keep our ships ready for a counter invasion if we want to. Let's reinforce this army. Let's. Might even get some Royal Indian Infantry Guards.
march them up to the front, and then they'll be ready. You guys are ready. It's probably... A greater estate madrasa, maybe? It's probably no need. Yeah, I want a Raj's Observatory for the increasing number of scholars. 14 turns. It's a pity, really, that we're going to have to go to war, but there we are. Okay, I'm going to keep hold of that cash. You don't need it here to attack a Madnagar. I don't need a general, although well, I don't actually have any generals spare, because they're all currently committed. You guys are still needed. For one more turn till we get the Raja's Palace. Do I trade with them? They're at war with everyone. They'll make everyone, uh, they'll make everyone hate us a bit much. So there's no enemies south of Cuttack to worry about. Yeah, they've landed to go take Ceylon. That fleet's attacked the French. So we could send our Karnataka force across to counter-invade and prevent its loss. They'll destroy the Madrasa, which we don't want. But then again, the Madrasa's not doing any anything at all anyway. The Madrasa's not making them, not making them Islamic. It's not making them happier because they're Islamic, because none of them are Islamic. But we can't build it into a church. We can't build it into an industrial building because that will increase unhappiness. So you may as well build it up into a coaching inn or Turkish baths or whatever the op the option is for the Mysoreans. I forgot. And then get another agent out of it and keep the keep your spy network on the move. Although the madrasa is allowing me to keep another an extra agent spawned, but then again, time passes so slowly in this campaign that actually. We're not in any danger of running out of them dying of old age at least. They might get assassinated, but they won't get they won't die of old age. Russia's raiding the Ottomans. Good, there's a big war in Europe. That's what I need. Keep them focused on each other. While I go for Portugal. I mean it would be even better if Sweden took them out, but I don't think they will. Not on our time frame anyway. Oh. Karnataka force can't counter invade. And we can't sail ships across to invade either. I wonder. So see so thirteen colonies are at war with the French. If I say hey, let's peace. And I'll give you Ceylon. And I want two grand. They've gone for it. France is going to take it, because they're at war anyway. And then I can take it back, but I'm now at peace with the... With the... Uh, I'm at peace with the damn United Provinces. Nice. So move my f my fleet such as it is further up. So you built the Raja's palace and it's still not enough. Yeah, we need to build that that new town needs to be built pretty quick. And I might have to build some levy just to act as a bit of a garrison. But apart from that, uh, I think we have to uh, declare on Portugal. So, diplomacy. I mean, we have lost a bit of income. 37 hundo. Amanda Gar won't provide us very much. And they're very, very angry. I might actually upgrade this to a madrasa to try and increase the chance of a religious agent spawning. But diplomacy... Portugal. 
declare war. Don't call in my allies. I don't want to give Sweden a chance to break it. Yeah, we've lost trade with the, the Mughals. We're back at war with the Mughal Empire. Actually, we're going to recruit a general here. Mr. Sanghavi. March towards Ahmadnagar. We are going to assault it, but one thing I do want to do is churn out a few sloops. I'll need one sloop. I'm not going to occupy the port yet because I'll damage it. But if I can capture it, then occupy it, and I can leap forward and attack this port here. You men are going to march forward towards Nagpur. And you men are going to march up to cover this bridgehead. My agent... Okay, hold on. Okay, right. You guys can go back... Get back here. So I couldn't, I couldn't get my agent across. There we go. Provide early warning. They're going to come at us, but that's okay. They're probably going to land, but we've got a good army back to take them out. Two turns we got some Royal Indian Guards to push up to the front. Satara so just about handled being left alone. I might upgrade this barracks to provide extra income. Or well, to provide in, uh, recruitment further up near the front where I need it. But you're going to attack a Madnagar. But looking at the timer... I believe it's time to end the episode. So, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you've enjoyed, and we'll see you next time uh, for the for the new war against the Mughal Empire. Cheers, everyone.